about two months ago, I started using Luminar Neo. And I have to admit that at first I was skeptical because I didn't like uh, other versions of Luminar. I thought that there is too much AI involved and the images are in a way trickeries where you can replace sky or do some things that are not actually there in the photo. And I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised by this version uh, of Luminar Neo. And in some ways, I think it's a lot better than Lightroom simply because it offers functionalities that I think uh, I'm used to having in Photoshop. And also I think that um, the way it edits the image with the tools that it has in some ways wor work better than Lightroom. But let me give you just five, just only five things that I think are, uh, are better than Lightroom. Let me just start with the most important thing that I, I think Luminar Neo has over Lightroom, and that is the ability to create a mask over any tool. So any tool that they're having, you can create a mask. The only tool that they, it doesn't allow that it's the develop module. When you're editing for the first time a raw file, because um, as you will notice, after you do the, the first develop, uh, the first develop uh, settings and edits, the minute you create another tool, that module disappears. And that will be the discussion of another plus that Luminar Neo has. You can create a mask for every tool that you have. The minus is that once you create the mask and you go into adjustments, you can't go back and adjust the mask. Or, I mean, if, if you create, for example, let me show you, if you create um, on, on structures, let's say we create a radial gradient, which uh, always comes with the outer side as being masked. And I really like the interior to be masked. You can't set that. That's a minus. So I click invert. Uh, and let's say I want this mask to affect this central area over here. Once I go to adjustments and try to and pull the the structure, and then I go back to masking, I don't see my mask. I don't see the mask that I already created. I can add to it, but I, ca I can't change the mask that already exists. That, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a little minus. It's not something that big of a deal because I'm not creating precise masks. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not painting every tree in the photo and then, oh my God, uh, the mask is completely gone, but it would have been better if I could have, um, adjusted the mask. Moving on to the second thing that I think Luminar Neo has, and it's really great is this organization in layers, just like in Photoshop. So, uh, we did the structure. Now let's go, for example, with a landscape and increase, uh, just pull a slider. And then when you, when you go in edits, you see all the, uh, all the edits that you did. And this is a really, really, uh, you know, good feature. And I think this type of layering, it works really well because you have the perfect control you, and you know, for sure that a modification that you're doing at a certain point will affect the entire image and uh, not just some elements that uh, the software producer uh, decided to. Now, a drawback to all this is I found out when, you, when I'm editing uh, raw files, if, for example, in the develop, I go into optics and I choose auto diffrange, auto fixed chromatic aberration and auto distortion corrections, then Luminar Neo tends to work a little bit slower than usual. And sometimes it can go really slow. And because of that, uh, I'm doing all the edits. And just before I do the export, I come here and uh, click all these uh, checkboxes just to, to, to be sure. Because uh, sometimes there are tools, some of the tools work a little bit uh, slower because they're using AI to correct some things. Uh, and as I said, uh, a, uh, I don't like it when it's, when it's happening. Uh, the third thing is that 
you can get better details from your image. In Lightroom or Camera Raw, you only have clarity and the haze. And sometimes the haze uh, functionality goes overboard in, um, in Lightroom. But for example, in here, if I go and pull the haze all the way up, as you can see, at 100%, it doesn't damage the photo. And it's it's a really good thing that this is not happening. Because in Lightroom, if you go a little bit overboard, you get some really freakish uh, results. Uh, also, Luminar Neo has other tools. For example, Lightroom has the haze and clarity. Over here, we have structure, we have dramatic, um, and also details. Now details i don't really use that much in luminar neo but structure i really use it and um if for example i want to enhance let's say the buildings over here and i i really i paint really fast with a brush so i think it brings it brings the details in the image um very very good back to life if you want and you can add the dimension and depth to the photo uh, you can go the other way for example and you can uh, really soften the image in that area so um it i think it works it works really well dramatic is another uh, slider that you have to be aware of and not pull that slider too much for example if i go let me just show you if you go overboard the image looks from another planet so what you want to do is go a little bit, but I'm not doing this. Uh, when I'm doing this, I'm not applying it to the whole image. So what I would do is again, use a brush and uh, apply it only to the rocks, for example, or some elements that I think would benefit from this uh, slider to have those elements uh, to be more visible. And um, the number four, Number four is the control of color. And why do I think this, this is better than Lightroom? Uh, okay, you also get in Lightroom plus Luminar, you also get this HSL panel that you can uh, use to um, adjust different, different colors. What I think that Luminar has better is this color harmony. And you have the color balance just like you would have in Photoshop and then you have split color warmth if you want more uh, the colors of the image to be more warmth or uh, more uh, cool looking you have the contra the contrast of uh, of the colors and um, by using a hue you can adjust the contrast on what uh, on a certain type of hue so not uh, not everything and you can go for example for the greens and increase the contrast in the greens and you can make them pop a little bit. And then you have brilliance that increases the overall color. You can go psychedelic with your photos. Um, again, you don't have to go overboard with it in order to have a pleasant, uh, a pleasant looking image. And now number five, the last thing that I think it's interesting is the noise reduction and sharpness that are based on AI. It also has the classic, if you go into to develop, it has an classical noise, noise reduction that Lightroom also has, but you also get noiseless, which is an extension from uh, Luminar Neo, and you can um, eliminate the noise by using an AI, and also the sharpening tools, uh, the super sharp AI. It's again a tool that is based on uh, on AI. Now, if you want to go Luminar Neo a try, you can find my affiliate link in the description of this video. The price will not go up if you decide to press that link. But yes, it's true that I will receive some money if you decide to uh, purchase Luminar Neo. You just uh, you can go and just give it a try and see if this is something that works for you. For me, it's a uh, it became it became a really valuable tool and i think it's it's more intuitive than lightroom and it helps you a lot with uh building some interesting um some interesting results in your photos it also has some tools that um for example atmosphere you can add fog it's it looks strange 
And but yes, if you already have fog in a photo, then you can go and intensify that fog and it can look okay. If you have sun rays, you can go and use the sun rays uh, slider and you can intensify those sun rays by creating some kind of uh, sun rays. But if you don't have those elements, using those um, options will result in an image that looks fake, that looks, I mean, it doesn't look uh, right to my feeling. Um, if you want to learn more about my uh, concept of landscape photography, there's also a link to my website and you can find an ebook on this uh, topic. Or you can join me to one of my photo tours in Tuscany right now in May and then in the Dolomites in uh, September. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better. Bye bye.